It's week 17, championship week, and we got to set our lineups. You're looking at them hard Saturday night, going into Sunday. Biggest matchup of the year, unless you're in one of those weird leagues to have their championship game in week 18. This is a big moment for you in your fantasy football career because you got to get by. You got to win your matchup. The news right now is very important. If a guy's in and out, that's going to impact some things. And we're catching some news on Zamir White. Looks like there's a high probability that he's going to be good to go as the lead back for the Raiders this weekend. We're going to cover whether you need him or not for fantasy football going forward for the rest of the season, which is about a day or two. Maybe another week if you're in a weird league, but we're going to do that right here. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now because I'm going to be a key resource for you next year for your research, for your drafts. I'm a key resource here for your dynasty fantasy football research for your rookie drafts. We cover that all offseason long for your Debbie drafts. Everything, we don't stop here once the season's end. Once it's over, we even ramp things up. We talk about high school recruits. We talk about the NFL draft nonstop. We talk about prospects. We talk about training camp clips. We talk about mini camp clips. We go over all that every day, multiple videos a day. Still, the hardest working fantasy football channel on YouTube right now. Click that subscribe button. Stop missing out. But let's talk about Zamir White. And the big thing here right now, Josh Jacobs is doubtful. There's a high probability that he does not play in this game. There's a high probability that Zamir White gets another opportunity to rock and roll this weekend. If you really think about the parameters around this, with Josh Jacobs being doubtful, with the contract negotiation, he had to fight this offseason, why would you suit up for a team that's not going to be winning the Super Bowl, play injured, Risk aggravating when you can just go through the offseason, get healthy, wrap this up. Let Zamir White get his work. Let him prove himself. Let him get his opportunity. But if Josh Jacobs can't go, Zamir White is on the upswing, and he has been productive in his two starts. 17.5 fantasy points against the Chargers, 14.5 fantasy points against the Chiefs. He has not had a 20 spot yet in fantasy production, but still, those numbers are good enough to get you by, if not a little bit more, especially if you snagged him off the waiver wire. He should be rostered in your league right now. If not, shame on your league. Shame on you and your league. He should be rostered, unless you're in an A-team league. But still, probably still rosterable, considering Josh Jacobs is out, considering the touch share here, because Amir White is one of the top running backs in the last two weeks in opportunity share. Not just running backs, Players overall in the NFL, we're talking about touches, carries, targets, all that workload together. He's seen a 41% share of the opportunity in the backfield. Fourth highest in the NFL right now in touches and targets. He's getting a lot of workload. A lot of workload equates the fantasy production. The workload is what you're buying in here for Zamir White. He's getting a lot of opportunity. He's getting a lot of chances to score fantasy points. I can't say he's going to be an RB1 this week. I can't say he's going to be an RB2 this week. I can say that if Josh Jacobs is out, he's more than likely, there's a high probability that he's going to be one of the top running backs when it comes to touches and targets, mostly touches and carries, because that's the trend line. That's how the Raiders identify. They like to pound the football. They got a rookie quarterback. Everything makes sense. I do not see that changing as we go into his third start, especially since he has been proving himself. He's been looking good. He's been good between the tackles. And he is due for this opportunity. Fourth round pick has some upside. And we looked at him during the draft process. One of the better running back prospects that you can get for cheap out there because the size adjusted athleticism. He was one of the top handcuffs throughout the entire season, one of the cheapest handcuffs because he wasn't getting touches unless something happened to Josh Jacobs. They were just going to take the running back, Jacobs, and just run him to death, and then it was going to be the next guy up. That's Zamir White. And we thought there would be a probability case that Amir Abdullah could be getting more workload here. 
No. With this coaching staff, it's Zamir White or bust. They're rolling with him. And look at him. Six foot, 214 pounds, 4'4", 40-yard dash, but a top-tier size-adjusted speed score. We've been talking about this for two years now, a long time, that that speed score is huge when you're a prospect like this, when you get your opportunity, because all it takes is a couple carries between the tackles, and you got yourself a big game. You got yourself earning some workload. Zamir White earned that workload. He earned that opportunity, and now we get to see him get more touches if Josh Jacobs is out, if he lives up to that doubtful tag, more than likely will, Samir White will have another week under the sun. Going back to his high school recruiting days, he was a five-star prospect. And a lot of you guys saying, hey, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we're looking at one game. But we're talking up Zamir White right now. We're talking him up. Five-star recruit, and he was nicknamed Zeus throughout the process. Look at the rocked up picture down there, and everybody wanted him. One of the top tier prospects at the running back position at that time. Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, Clemson, top programs wanting him. More than that even, he had 24 offers. And he went to RBU at Georgia at the time. At the time, Georgia was one of the top programs churning out running back prospects. He had some knee issues come up. Some ACL injuries slowed him down, sharing the backfield with some top running backs. And the knee issues were a big deal there. And the production, it was impacted. All that impacted. And he dropped in the draft a little bit to the fourth round. But now he's getting his opportunity to shine. He's getting his opportunity. If anything, even if you're out of the playoffs right now and you're just watching me for entertainment, this is the comeback story you can lean on. This is a running back prospect who was highly ranked, five-star recruit. Everybody was looking for him to take over college football. Got hit with those knee injuries, and everybody was sad about that. Everybody was wondering when he was going to come back, how he was going to work his way back up. And now it's week 17 of the fantasy football season. Everybody should be rooting for Zamir White unless you're playing against him in fantasy. Because of the comeback story. And he's against the Colts. We got a 42 and a half over under. The Raiders are on the road. The Raiders are on the road in this matchup. Things are looking pretty clear here. Because the Colts rank third. And, and points allowed to running backs. 27.2 PPR points per game allowed to running backs. There's only been two games out of this whole season where they have not allowed 10 fantasy points or more to a running back that they're going up against, to a single running back, not the whole slew of running backs on the depth chart, to a running back. Somebody at least scores enough to get you by. If you consider 10, 11, 12 enough to get you by, somebody at least scores that much. There's only been two games where the running backs on the depth chart fell on their face against the Colts. And that was earlier in the season. It's been quite some time. It was prior to Thanksgiving. Might even be prior to Halloween. It's been a long time. And the Colts have been allowing points and yards to running backs. They were further down in the rankings earlier in the season. Remember, we talk about this almost every day. We look at these defenses almost every day. This is a good opportunity for Zamir White. This is a good opportunity for him to hit on his upside. He has not touched that yet. It's a good opportunity for him to cross the goal line. We know he's getting touches. That's the one thing we can bank on here. Zamir White's getting opportunities. Probably going to at least be top 10 in opportunities this week, if not top 5, because that's where he's been at this whole time. Looking at the rankings at some fantasy sites, to the right here, we got fantasy pros. Maybe it's on your left and the other side is 4 for 4. 4 for 4 has him ranked at RB15. Fantasy Pros has him ranked at RB33. They were pegging for Josh Jacobs to be in. However, they have not adjusted yet. They have not adjusted to the news. 4 for 4 has already done that. 4 for 4 is a very conservative ranking site when it comes to fantasy. That's one thing I've noticed with them throughout the years. And I'm more of an aggressive player. So I use them to calm me down. 
I look at other sites, if they're having him ranked in the 30s right now, considering the news right now that he's more than likely out, you may want to adjust your subscription status because he should at least be in the 20s. He should at least be there on the low end because I understand some of these other players. I understand, but when you're top five in opportunities, you're going up against the Colts, your odds have elevated a lot. RB15 seems okay. Look at the running backs behind him. Ezekiel Elliott, Aaron Jones, DeAndre Swift. Seems okay for the rankings. It seems a little juiced up for me. Seems like it seems a little scary, but I kind of understand it here because you're getting guaranteed touches here, guaranteed opportunities in a matchup. That's very, very prominent for Zamir White to hit. I am in the camp that Zamir White's going to be getting a ton of volume, a ton of workload, and a good opportunity. I can't guarantee you the production because I can see this game script being weird. I definitely do. But if you need him in your lineup, it's because you need to bank on the running back touches. You're hurt at running back. And you're loving the news right now because you probably picked him up three weeks ago and you saw him getting the workload and you're loving it. And you're still keeping him on your roster and you're putting him in because you are got nothing else at running back. And a lot of people don't. And a lot of people don't feel good at running back. And I'm going to say he's got good odds. He's got good odds to hit this week. There's going to be a lot of lineup decisions with him. And around the RB20 to 15 range, you're going to have to trust your gut there because a lot of guys in that range have very similar probabilities. However, it, you may not need him because you're good at running back. You stacked up. You've been good throughout the season. You're keeping it simple. You're not going to risk on a small sample. And he's not for everybody. That's why you need to watch the full video. Because I'm going to tell you whether or not you need the running back prospect. And then you can look at the data. And you can determine for yourself. Because you know what? That's what I do here. We go over the numbers. We pull up the news. I talk in hyperbole because that's how I roll. But guess what? Zamir White is going to be getting a lot of workload on Sunday if Josh Jacobs is out. We know that. And if Luck plays into that and he taps into his upside, Samir White, league winner. If it doesn't, you know what? There's a good chance he gets you around 10 to 12 fantasy points, and that could be okay. That could be okay to get you by. If you're good at running back, you know what you're going to do. If you're hurting at running back, you may have to make some decisions, and that's how the cookie crumbles. But you need to be clicking that subscribe button right now because I'm going to be helping you in 2024, 2025, and for the rest of your life for your fantasy football leagues. I want to thank you for watching this season. I'll catch you on the next video.